Hey there. Welcome to the Anchor Point Church podcast. We're so glad that you're here with us. We are a group of people in New Tecumseh, Ontario, who are doing our best to follow Jesus in the everyday, ordinary stuff of life. Our vision is simple, in Alliston as it is in heaven. So whether you're here checking us out for the first time or are already a member of our church family, we hope and pray that this message, which is rooted and grounded in the scriptures, would encourage you, console you, and build you up, and most of all, would point you to Jesus and the vision he has for his kingdom. Bless you. Me llamo es Tomás. Gracias por estar aquí esta mañana. Eh? God? Okay. Well, hey everyone, so good to be together. We've got some special guests from Colombia. We got Jairo and Cindy's uh, parents here. Can they say hello? Pretty big deal. Uh, it's a long trip. So uh, it's good to be together, guys. Um, my family, we just got home last night from Florida, and so if I don't make any sense this morning, just want to give a little bit of context for that. So, But I thought to start, who's in, who's in for a couple uh, quick trivia questions about the United States of America? All right. Anybody need to stretch or just kind of like do something? Okay. What is the name of the bridge connecting Sarnia to Detroit? Confederation Bridge? Yeah. Nope. Ambassador, Ambassador Bridge. Wow. Woo! I was like, Katie's got another. Okay. All right. Which chicken based restaurant is closed on Sundays? Brittany Wilcox, well done. What is the best place to get coffee in Cincinnati and why is it called Proud Hound? <laughs> Proud Hound. Good job, Kevin. All right. <laughs> What is the fastest growing sport in America? Pickleball. Pickleball. Dude, Andrew Wilcox. Okay, so a few stats around pickleball. We saw you were going to get pickleball stats this morning. This is the best day of your life. In the, in the United States, there are over 4.8 million picklers, or pickleball players. Picklers, that's what they're called. Um, Pickleball, often described as a combination of tennis, ping pong, and badminton, grew nearly 40% between, between 2019 and 2021, making it America's fastest growing sport. The sport has trended older in the past. You know, um, Half of all serious pickleball players, those who play eight or more times a year in 2021, were 55 and older, but now that's trending younger. It's the fastest growing segment among people under the age of 24. If you're under the age of 24, or over the age of 55, or somewhere in between, pickleball is your sport. It is for you. <laughs> Anybody played it? Yeah. It's super fun. Um, so it's catching on for a multitude of reasons, mostly because anyone can play. You can be pretty uncoordinated and still can play it. It's a good workout, and it's really easy to get hooked. We got pretty into it the last over the last couple years. Um, so Im- imagine if you and I, like, I, I texted you and I was like, hey, man, let's go play pickleball at the courts uh, down by my house. And we, we show up there, and instead of playing pickleball, I just was like grilling you about like, where do you think, like, where do you think badminton came from? Where do you think, like, why is it called pickleball? What do you, what do you think? And what, what is a pickleball, anyways? We're just kind of pontificating. What is the Greek or Hebrew word for pickleball, you think? Where does this origin story come from? Or we just sat there and studied the rule book, and we were, had like our measuring tape out, and I was like, hey man, this net is 33 inches tall supposed to be 34 so that game where you just beat me it doesn't actually count so my record's still good and like we made sure the kitchen part was seven foot like does the game court like count if the thing is only 19 feet wide you get the point that would not be very fun okay the, the rules matter but the point of the rules is to facilitate you actually playing the game of pickleball it isn't predominantly about the rules it's about hitting the ball with incredible spin directly at your six or 15 year old daughter that she whiffs it completely. <laughs> Where's Lily? Anyways. So we've done, guys, over the last six, week, six weeks, a fair bit of digging into the person of the Holy Spirit. We talked about 
the theology of the Spirit and how the Spirit is actually God and how does the Spirit actually influence and impact our lives. We've done a lot of thinking around this. This is worthy and important and good work, but all of that work was for a purpose, for us to learn how to become people who walk with the Spirit, who keep in step with the Spirit, who are empowered by the Spirit, or in other words, people who actually play the game. I don't want us just to show up to church and just pontificate about things. I want us to actually play the game. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to share a few thoughts on some of the nuance around how we'd like to see the culture of our church continue to grow in this regard of living life in the Spirit. And it's going to be really low-key and hopefully helpful. And then at the end, what we're going to do is actually we're going to pray for one another. We're going to do the stuff. We're actually going to play the game. Does that sound good? Okay, cool. So if, if you guys have your Bibles, I'm going to read for you uh, from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 13. So Galatians 5, verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not you are, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious: sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is God's Word. Would you guys pray with me? Come Holy Spirit. We're grateful for your presence here amongst us in this very room. We're thankful for each person that is in this space, Lord. We thank you that you love them and know them, that you have good plans and purposes for their lives. And Lord, we ask that no matter where we find ourselves this morning, no matter what we're carrying, no matter what we're struggling through, no matter what we are rejoicing in, no matter what we are weeping over, I pray, Lord, this morning that we would encounter you, the true and living God. That, Lord, there would be something of your Holy Spirit that would make itself known to us this morning in a way that would change us and transform us forever. And so as we look into what it looks like to walk by the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, Lord, would you reveal things to us that we've never seen before? Would you illuminate things? And, Lord, would, as we pray together to close this this morning, would there be words spoken and pictures spoken and shared and scriptures shared that would make a lasting impact on our lives? So we love you, Lord, and we pray this all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. So the, let me just quickly, just again, remind us who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the helper. So the Holy Spirit is God. He's one of the personalities in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's personal presence. It is, he is invisible and powerful and sustains life. The Hebrew word is ruach which is wind or energy and vitality you get from breathing. Let's take a breath in. Uh, Breath out. Ruach. Jesus says to his disciples, it's better for him to go so that he can send the helper who will come and help us. And what he does is he breathes on his disciples and they receive the Holy Spirit. 
And, and most importantly, uh, th- something we've been trying to hammer on this whole way through is the Holy Spirit is a person with whom you are invited to form a living relationship with right here and right now. So I want to talk about just three little things that, that stick out from the, two from this pas- uh, passage and then one from another one about how do we live life in the Spirit. The first thing I want us to think about in, in, in terms of like f- carrying this out into our everyday ordinary lives is learning to keep in step with the Spirit. That's what Paul says here. In verse 18, he says this, or verse 25, he says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So if you guys ever uh, been holding hands or locking arms with someone, and you're walking kind of at like a different pace than one another, super awkward, and you're like, you're trying to get on the right pace, or maybe you've been on the worship team, and, and like, no one's on the same page, the monitors aren't working, you're looking at Dan's foot, he's looking at your foot, and no one's kind of following each other. Anyone else on the worship team ever had that experience? I know I have many, many times. I've been like just stomping, like staring at someone, like, follow me. Um, but the, the, the terminology that Paul is getting at, it's, like, it's actually like a military term. It's about like falling in line and walking in time. And so think of marching in a formation. You gotta fo- There's someone in the lead, and you're, you need to keep in step with the person who's leading. We're turning at the right time. And someone would set the pace for you at the right time. And you'd, you'd base your own pace in walking and, and where you're heading based off that person who's in the lead. And so we, we see this. Uh, like that's, that's the image that Paul is trying to get at. So it's, it's so important for us that we're thinking about becoming a people who are empowered by the Spirit, and whose character is being formed by the Spirit of God, to let Him set the pace, to keep in step with the Spirit, to, to, to develop a dynamic dependence on Him and not ourselves. So it's so important for us to keep our eyes and attention on God as we move throughout life. So I don't know about you, but I find it very um, easy to look sideways. What is Thomas doing? What is Lee doing? What is... Um, Susan doing rather than what is God doing. The temptation is for us to look sideways and to go their pace or their speed. And this usually ends up in a terrible disaster of an off beat clap. We've all experienced it. Brittany Wilcox brought it up a couple weeks ago. Like, Tom, don't let people clap unless you set the pace. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And we do this, we, we kind of, instead of looking to the spirit to set the pace of the tone, we look at our neighbors. What are they watching on TV? It can't be that bad if they are. What are they spending their money on? I mean, I'm not spending it on such foolish things as they are, so maybe I'm doing all right. Or for us parents in the room, how long do they let their kids watch TV? Okay, we're under that threshold, so we're doing great. And what happens, when we look at others this way, we end up feeling either holier than now, or we feel full of shame. It's shame or it's uh, self-righteousness. But what we want to learn and develop is how do we look at the Holy Spirit to to be the one kind of setting the pace and the tone for those things in our everyday ordinary lives? Like, yeah, what we spend our money on, what we watch on TV, what we let our kids do, how do we raise our families, how we interact with our neighbors, how we do all of this stuff needs to be set by the Spirit. So keeping in step with the Spirit is key to us becoming our true selves in Jesus and to living life in God's right here, right now kingdom. So that is keeping in step, learning to develop a dynamic dependence on God. The second thing that we read here this morning is from verse 18. Paul says, if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So we need to learn to be led. These kind of go together. And what I'm talking about here is developing an attentive responsiveness. There's this whole idea of like, you know what, I am not in control of my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get to the good life, but you do, God, so show me the way. Um, there's this really cool job that I would never want. I would be terrified to have it, but it's called a harbor pilot. And so what these people do is they're, they're helping these massive ship, ships come into these really tight spaces and ports and stuff like that, and they navigate all these narrow, treacherous places They have to have this insane knowledge of the terrain and the dangers and the best way to keep everyone safe. And all this stuff is happening, like the tide and the temperature and the wind and the size of the ship. All this has to be considered in real time. And these harbor pilots are available to kind of navigate these ships into port 24-7, 365. So they meet you up. They meet you there in the water on your moving ship. Somehow they get out to you and they find you where you are 
and they help you get your ship into port. But what they do is they give counsel to the captain of the ship. And so the captain has a choice. I can either take the harbor pilot's advice or I could do it my own way. And uh, my father-in-law, Klaus, is a big boat guy, and I am not a big boat guy. And so a couple years ago, we were at the cottage, and I decided to get my boating license. And uh, it's his boat, and so I was like, hey, Pop, can you come out and just kind of help me figure out how to do this? And he very graciously came up to the cottage and showed me how to do it. And so there was a million things. I could, if, I, if I went there today, I couldn't get the boat started, I guarantee you. But he was in the boat with me. And he's telling me, okay, Tom, do this, and then do this, and then do this. So I had a choice to listen. I could have been like, you know what, Klaus? I know you drove up here, dude, but I know what is happening. And that would not have gone well for anyone. I had a choice whether to listen or not. But as I was, like, we got the thing going, we were out in the water, uh, he kind of just was behind me, just kind of giving me little tips. Like, hey, Tom, maybe a little bit more to the left. It's a little bit shallow over there. A little bit more to the right over there, Tom. There's some weird stuff that happened the other day with some kind of seaweed stuff. So what I, I was trying to do, I was trying to be attentive and responsive to his direction, to his voice, in the real experience of trying to get this boat around Three Mile Lake with my kids and wife on it. And it was good. We got back safely. We had no issues um, until this year where I, anyways, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> we made it back safely to the dock. Not perfectly. I screwed up a couple times, but we made it back. And so we know this, Jesus talks about this, the way of the kingdom is narrow, but the good news is that the Spirit is there to lead us. The Spirit knows all the things that we're up against in our everyday ordinary lives. He knows the treacherous terrain. He knows the tide, the temperature, the wind, the size of the ship, all the things that we have to consider. He is there to help us consider and lead and guide us on the way. So this is not a prescriptive thing. Every situation that we're in, every personality in this room, we're not going to face and experience things the same way. But the Spirit is still there to meet you as you are, when you are, where you are, to communicate to you in a personal way, to guide you to where you need to go. But here's the thing. You and I have a choice to listen and obey or to disregard. And more often than not, when we find ourselves kind of shipwrecked, it's because we've taken that uh, harbor pilot, like we put that cap on ourselves and we've run short. <laughs> What we see in the gospel is that Jesus died to restore our free will and agency. He wants us to partner with him, to choose his way over our own way. And so what we're going to learn to develop is that self-control is this paramount thing for the life of a disciple. So we partner with the Holy Spirit in a posture of attentive responsiveness to his direction in the narrow way of the kingdom. And then the third thing I want us to think about is actually from the book of Ephesians. So Paul, in Ephesians chapter 5, you guys have heard this verse so many times, but I'm going to read it again. Ephesians 5, verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So this is what I want us to think about. I want us to think about, firstly, keeping in step. Secondly, being led. And finally, being filled. So when you hear the word filled, do you picture a glass with milk or like a bucket with water? Yes? Yeah? The image actually here is, is, is like more like a, a sail filled with air. Remember, ruach is breath. And so Paul is saying, like, hey, how do you like learn to kind of lift your sails to catch the wind? And how do we learn to be filled with that spirit, that breath of God in our everyday ordinary lives? We have a good friend, Roger Bai, who is taking his sailing license and actually in the Mediterranean. He just brags about it all the time. I'm like, dude, this is enough already, okay? Or have you guys ever been to a saga and seen those guys and girls on the kite boards? It's crazy. Like they just get crazy wind, but they're 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 learning to kind of like utilize the wind that's there. They're, they're not doing anything to drum up the wind. They're just harnessing what is already there. But they have to, to form habits to be able to get the most out of the power of the wind. They have to be there. They have to have the right gear. They have to kind of put themselves in the situation and become aware of what the wind is actually doing. Is it coming off this side or that side? And then they harness that wind, and it looks like a ton of fun. It looks kind of dangerous, but it looks like it would be incredibly fun. And the, the, the verb tense here that we've talked about this a bunch of times, that Paul is saying is, hey, go on being filled. Be being filled with the Spirit. Hey, keep lifting up your sails to be filled with the breath of God, is what he's saying. 
Simon Ponzibi says this, this, this whole idea of being filled is a constantly repeatable, deepening experience of God's Spirit who brings a greater revelation of the person and work of Christ, a blazing love for Christ, a greater and more effective witness to Christ, and a transforming conformity to the character of Christ. I could use some of that. Paul goes on, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why gathering together, guys, on Sundays and in community groups and over meals in our, in our homes is, is, is such an incredible opportunity for us to grow and to be filled with the Spirit. What are some of these habits that we can form to help us keep our sails lifted to the breath and wind of God. Things like reading the Bible plan. Things like coming out to seek night. Things like getting up early and just doing the secret place 2.0 challenge. 15 minutes each morning by yourself with God quietly. What we're going to hopefully over time develop is a lifestyle which is made up of habits and rhythms that are reflected in, in the life of Jesus that will allow us to experience the fullness of that ruach, that breath that wind of the Spirit. That's what God has for us. And all of these things, guys, all of these things, being led, keeping in step, being filled, all of these things help us become like Jesus, to be with Jesus, and to do what Jesus did. We have to remember that the whole point of what we're doing is to be conformed to the image of God's Son, transformation into the likeness of Jesus, Christ formed in us. Getting back to that fruit of the Spirit that we read earlier, that, that's the likeness of Jesus. That, what we read there in, in Galatians 5, that, those are descriptors of the person of Jesus. And that's the trajectory that we are on as his followers, as his disciples, is to become people who embody the fruit of the Spirit. Who embody love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That would be a beautiful community of people who could reflect that and live that out in their normal life. So that's the rhythm that we're marching to. That's the harbor the pilot is leading us towards, and that's the wind in the sails. So we keep in step. We learn to be led. We continually be, be filled with the, the, the Spirit, and then we repeat that over and over and over again. This is what life in the Spirit looks like. Amen? So just a couple more um, thoughts, and then we're going to get into praying for one another. So for some of us, like this could be like, dude, I don't, I, I thought you guys weren't a weird church, and now you're talking about the spirit and what is going on. Why are we doing this? Um, we we don't want to be a weird, a weird church. We don't want you to be weird. We don't want to be weird. We do, however, want to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, and we want to like we read about these people in the New Testament, and they're they're living this stuff out, and that's what we want for you. That's what we want for ourselves. We want to be people who are living out New Testament Christianity. And that's only possible in the power of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and being filled with the Spirit. That's the only way it's possible. We can't read enough books to make it possible. We can't wake up early enough to make it possible in our own strength. We need to be filled with the Spirit. So God is after our whole lives, not just parts of our lives, all of our lives. And for this to work, we need to go all in. And this is a process, and, and there's a way that God draws us in over time. But it's, it's like we want to just get our cards on the table. Like, hey, we want to be all in, God. We don't, want to, we don't want a divided heart. We want you to have our whole hearts. And I remember uh, for my, in my own journey, the beginning of this whole idea of being filled with the Spirit it started with me being really resistant, like physically resistant. There was this guest speaker who came. I told a lot of you guys this story. And uh, he wanted to pray for people to be filled with the Spirit. And I was really skeptical. Um, and then he was like, oh, I'm going to pray for you, Tom. And he put his hand on my forehead. And he, he kind of was like, you know, sometimes when I pray for people, they fall over. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, dude. And so I was standing there, and he was putting his head, hand on my forehead. And Jess will attest to this being true. And by the end, he's praying for me. I'm like this. I'm like, I'm not going down, dude. You are not pushing me over. And I was like so resistant. And that, like, maybe that guy was out, of, like, out to lunch or whatever. But... The whole idea was I wasn't even willing to kind of engage what God was doing. I was like so, like, Ugh, I'm not going to do it. Rather than like open-handed, like, oh, who, who knows? Like, let's, let's see what God wants to do. 
And so that was a lot of my own like hangups about like, I don't want to be weird. I don't want to have to surrender. I don't want to have to like do with this stuff. What if it gets awkward? And so what we're, what we've learned and what I've learned over time, like of, of just kind of learning how to practice this, and we're not doing this perfectly, um, is that we just want to be, these are just some kind of like visionary statements. We want to be naturally supernatural, meaning this, we don't want to get weird. Um, the more normal we are, I think it's actually, the, it's actually the more powerful when you're actually sharing something with someone. Say you're praying for your neighbor and you just speak in a normal tone. You don't have to like all of a sudden have a southern accent when you're like you're sharing something with your neighbor from the Bible. And with that, we, we, we make it our aim to never, when we're sharing and praying for people, our goal is to never manipulate. We don't want to like in our make make our tone more like intense to kind of manipulate or get an effect out of you. We want to just be naturally supernatural. Like, okay, if the Spirit lives in me and He wants to reveal Jesus to me and, and that whole process, He wants to encourage you and console you and build you up. I don't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be weird. Um, and we don't want to do anything for effect. You may have noticed we don't have smoke machines. We don't have mood music playing as I'm preaching. I, my voice is pretty boring. I don't really change it that often. But what we're trying to do, who laughed there? I'm just kidding. Uh, what we're trying to do is become just aware of what God's up to in our normal lives. At the grocery store, I always say the grocery store. I'm there a lot. At the grocery store, at Tim Hortons. I, I think the Holy Spirit's, I don't know, but sometimes, I'm, human, I'm just kidding. Um, too far? That was too far? Okay. Uh, so we want to be naturally supernatural. We want to surrender the outcome. When we're praying for people, when we're hoping God to, to, for God to move, we want to surrender the outcome. Okay, God doesn't move based on our, the, our faith reaching a certain level on the faith thermometer. It's just we want to surrender to God. Lord, we believe you're good. You want good for this person. So I'm just going to pray to you, and I'm going to surrender the outcome to you. You're sovereign. Uh, as we learn to kind of step out in the gifts of the Spirit, we want to seek to grow. And this means, and this is hard for a lot of us, especially me, we have to embrace failure. We have to realize that we're going to try to step out and say, hey, I feel like God's saying this for you. And the person might be like, I don't know what you're talking about. That makes no sense to me. Or like, I actually don't want you to pray for me. And that's okay. This is counterintuitive to a lot of us is, is like, our, our, as we mature in God, we need to become more dependent, not less dependent. So if we're going to do this, we're going to mess up, and we will most certainly get things wrong. So let's just get that on the table right away. But what we're doing is we're learning to walk in the Spirit. We're learning to keep in step with the Spirit. We're learning to kind of clap on beat, if you will. Hey, Brittany. We also want to be humble. We want to be humble. We don't want to come in and say, like, I've got the word of the Lord for you today. We want to humbly say things like, hey, as, as we were praying for you, I just felt like this maybe could be for you. Open-handed. Not, this is what God's doing in your life. Amen. You know, it's like, okay, I, I could be totally wrong. But when we were praying for you, I got this weird picture. I thought I was going to share it for you. If it's something great, if nothing, then have a great day. It's okay, it's okay to make mistakes. You will get it wrong. Things will get messy. And what we're doing is we're kind of, yeah, like I already said, we're trying to share open-handedly. We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to prove. We're just trying to encourage and build up another person. And again, this is not a tool for manipulation. And then finally, we just got to be a people who just do it. Who just When we're, we feel like God is speaking something, we just do it. We have boldness in that. And so if we're going to make mistakes, let's make mistakes in the direction of action rather than inaction. And the good news is this. There's grace for the mistakes that, that we're going to make as we get it wrong. Cool? Yeah. All right. So... This morning, uh, Jess in pre-service prayer was asking us kind of like, or kind of encouraging us like, hey, you know what, we, we're, we've been talking about the spirit for the last, you know, six weeks. And let, let's just not let this kind of be the end of this. We did the Holy Spirit thing, we're on to the next thing. How do we bring this into our, the rest of our lives? Like, how do we just, we've learned, we've done a little bit of a refresher, but we want this to just be all the time, the, the way that we kind of live our lives as, as his followers. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, practice that. We're actually going to take some time and break into smaller groups. So we did this a few weeks ago. How great was Chad Rogers a couple weeks ago? He was awesome. He was so good. And so if you're here this morning and you're hearing this, you're like, okay, I actually do want to like raise my sails and I want to be filled by the Spirit. Or I do actually want to learn how to keep in step with the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit. You want a fresh filling of God's Spirit. I just want us to, we're going to pray a really simple prayer. And then once we do that, we're actually going to break into to, to groups of four 
just for a little bit, and that's nothing crazy. We're just going to sit in these groups of four, and we're going to take a few minutes to pray for one another. Okay? And, and the, the good news is, like we were talking about earlier, anyone can play pickleball. Anyone can pray for someone. You don't need to be an expert. You can pray a simple prayer, and that can bless someone. Okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, I am... Just do it. All right, Carrie, I love it. Just do it. Just do it. Trademark Nike. So, um... Why don't you guys stand up? And I have this prayer. It's really simple. Yeah, go to the washroom if you need to. And guys, I, I hope you, you sense this. Like we're we are trying to we want to honor God. We also want to just kinda have have a realistic expectation that we are just we're human beings. We can laugh, we can have fun. God is is with us even in those times, okay? So this prayer is really simple. And we've been practicing this whole idea of just kind of opening up our hands in this posture of receiving. And so we want to have faith that Jesus was right when he said it's better for me to go so I can send you the Holy Spirit. That there's something to that, that, that God wants to fill us up. He wants to indwell us. He wants to empower us so that we can live the life he's called us to live, which we could never do in our own strength. And that God wants to form his character in us into the most deformed places in our lives, the places that need his help the most. And so what we're doing is when we're opening up our hands, we're saying, hey, I don't actually have the answer I'm looking for in myself, but you do, God. So I'm, I, there's two things happening. We're kind of laying down kind of the ways that we've in the past gone about trying to meet those things. And we're also kind of, we're, we're, we're laying things down and we're also opening ourselves up to the Spirit of God. And so what I want us to do is I want us to take, I'm going to give us one minute to kind of visualize and picture laying the things down in your life that are leading you, that are filling you, and that, are, that you're following, like they're, they're keeping you, and they're setting the pace for your life, the tone for your life. And I want you to picture laying those things down. I'm just going to pray, come Holy Spirit, let's just take a minute now, would you reveal things to us, God, that we need to lay down? read this scripture where Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. And then if you want to, there's no pressure. Again, this prayer that will, is on the screen, I'll lead us in that prayer. And then we'll sit for another minute, and then we'll split up into our groups and pray for one another. So this is Luke chapter 11. This is Jesus speaking. He says, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? So Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of your Spirit. Please baptize me now with your Holy Spirit. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.